The modern pocket beagle is an attempt to recreate the smaller Old English scent hounds from centuries ago. The pocket beagle, also sometimes known as the Old English pocket beagle, is the name given to a unique line of miniature beagles. As far back as the 13th century, breeders began to experiment with small hunting dogs created from the beagle line. The product of their efforts was known as the glove beagle, so called because it was almost small enough to fit on a glove. The pocket beagle was developed alongside it, although it isn't certain whether they were distinct dogs or simply two different terms that referred to the same thing. Regardless, these small scent hounds eventually disappeared from history. The modern pocket beagle is an attempt to recreate these small hunting companions that once strode beside English nobility. Due to their indefatigable nature and their amazing sense of smell, the nose contains some 220 million scent receptors. They are considered to be quintessential hare hunters out in the field. The pocket beagle isn't currently recognized as a distinct breed by any organization, but the American Kennel Club does recognize smaller dogs standing under 13 inches tall as acceptable attributes of the beagle breed. Regardless, the pocket beagle is characterized by a slender and athletic physique, a long and erect tail, and drooping ears. The smooth medium-length fur is usually tricolor. The three most accepted colors are white, black, and tan, but other colors can be mixed in as well, including blue, gray, silver, red, and liver. There are even silver tricolor and chocolate tricolor coats. There are usually three methods that breeders use to achieve the smaller size, crossbreeding, dwarfism, and selecting runts or smaller dogs from a litter. The first method disqualifies it from purebred status, whereas the last two methods can introduce health problems into the line. Unfortunately, there are a lot of breeders who aren't very careful and allow health problems to spread through their litters. Potential owners should do their research and try to find reputable breeders who have a history of producing nothing but high-quality smaller beagles. The birth weight isn't always a perfect indicator of its eventual size, so unless the small size is already bred into the line, you may need to wait until the beagle is full grown at around 9 months of age to determine its size. The main difference between these two dogs is their size. Pocket beagles generally stand no taller than the 13-inch threshold of the accepted beagle standard. Depending on how it's bred, the pocket beagle may have other differences in terms of coat color, proportions, and skeletal structure. Depending on how it's bred, the pocket beagle may be at risk of several health conditions, including epilepsy, dwarfism, hypothyroidism, cancer, obesity, and developmental disorders of the hip, legs, or kneecap. While no dog will ever be perfectly healthy, it's still a good idea to find a breeder whom you can trust to produce a healthy dog with minimal problems. Ask them to provide proof that their dogs have been tested for common genetic and developmental issues. You should also set up an early appointment with a vet to go over common issues. If well cared for, the pocket beagle has a typical lifespan of 10 to 15 years old. To sum up the most common health problems of the pocket beagle, obesity cancer dwarfism epilepsy hypothyroidism if you've ever had any experience with the spunky and energetic beagle, then you should know what to expect from the pocket beagle, except perhaps even more hyperactive. This is a friendly, charming, and fun-loving dog that will form a deep bond with just about any member of a family. The one caveat is that it does need frequent mental and physical stimulation throughout the day. Otherwise, if it's left alone for long periods of time, it might suffer from acute separate anxiety and resort to destructive behavior. Despite its small size, the pocket beagle is a bit of a responsibility to care for, 
at least in terms of its exercise and social needs. While this dog will be satisfied with just being your companion, rather than a hunting dog, you should be aware that the pocket beagle has retained strong hunting instincts that may overwhelm even the best training. Fortunately, as long as it receives enough exercise and play, it can adapt reasonably well to different living arrangements. If you have any other questions or concerns about dog ownership, then you should talk with your vet. A full-grown pocket beagle will probably need around a cup of high-quality dog food every day, taking into account its size, age, and activity level. This breed has a strong tendency to consume anything it can, so you should keep food away from its prying mouth in order to maintain a proper weight. These dogs should be groomed with a medium-sized bristle brush or hound glove at least once a week to remove or loosen up dead hair. Grooming may increase in frequency during the spring shedding season. This breed is vulnerable to ear infections and needs frequent cleanings at least once every two weeks. You should also trim your dog's nails if they start clicking on the floor. Finally, you should brush its teeth on a regular basis. These dogs have a reputation for being somewhat difficult to train. It may take nearly a full year to properly house train them. Owners should also work on curbing some of their natural instincts to wander off or bark excessively. Positive reinforcement methods and plenty of patience will go a long way with this dog. If you are struggling at all, then you might want to hire a professional trainer. These dogs need at least an hour of exercise every single day. These sessions should be a mixture of intense exercise, games, playtime, and long walks. Because of their tendency to wander off, it's a good idea to keep your dog on a leash unless it's been specifically trained to come back to you. These dogs are a bit rambunctious and destructive as puppies. They will need early training and socialization to become well-rounded full-grown adults, beginning preferably at around a few months old. Crate training is also very much recommended to curb its anxiety and to help with house training. If you are a fan of scent hounds, then you might want to check out the following breeds. American Foxhound. As a quintessential American hunting dog, the Foxhound is a medium-sized breed with long, slender legs and a smooth coat of black, tan, and white fur. They have a friendly, easy-going temperament that makes them ideal, though high-intensity, companions. Basset Hound. Originating from France, the Basset Hound is like the opposite of the noble-looking American Foxhound. It has drooping skin disproportionate features, and very short legs, so its stomach is almost touching the ground. But the Basset Hound does have a docile, gentle personality, great for families with babies or toddlers, and an amazing sense of smell. Bloodhound. Among the largest of the scent hounds, the Bloodhound is a European breed, possibly originating from France with the tenacity and power to track larger prey like deer and boar. It has wrinkly skin, drooping ears, and a short coat composed of black and tan hair.